What's up guys, it's Gina. Welcome back to a UU campaign, the series where every, once every week, uh, still trying to work out a day because it's probably going up on Friday. Anyway, <laughs> where once every week we will take on the UU ladder and uh, if we beat our opponents, we get a Pokemon. If we l lose to our opponents, we have to get rid of a Pokemon. Um, if, that, if that short intro confused you, updated rules are in the description anyway. Um, we're going to be continuing on the third episode. We're 5-0 and so far, and the Pokemon we've picked up are Crocodile, Dewblade, Salamence, Crobat, and Lucario. Um, I'm hype. I'm super hyped to continue. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab a battle. Hopefully I updated Salamence's move slot. I think I did, and I did. There we go. Um, so we'll, we'll see what this guy's team, what, what this guy's team has, uh, for us once it loads, maybe. There we go. All right, this looks like a very competent team. Um, I'm not sure what to take if I win, because I already have a Crocodile. I uh, already have a Chestnut. I'm kind of thinking Nido King, but we'll see. We'll, we'll figure that out. We'll cross the bridge when we come to it. Um, likely leads for him are this or this. Is this Scarf? This is Scarf. Um, still named after the same people, because these people are amazing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lead Crook. Uh, because I kind of want to scout what he leads with. He leads with Nidoking. King. That is beautiful for me. Because I will outspeed this no matter what. Um, he has zero ground immunities. And I can get a free kill turn one. Um, if he does decide to stay in. Which he does. There we go. So off to a great start. Sork putting in a, a lot of work already. Um, because last battle Sork kind of didn't do... Or last session Sork kind of didn't do anything. But that's my fault. Um... Anyhow, I'm going to go and do Spadef Dewblade right here, because getting a Toxic off on this is very nice. If he goes for Drain Punch or whatever, then it works. He ends up going for the Bulk Up, so I know this set. Um, I feel like some Poketuber, like big Poketuber, made a move set like this, because I've seen this like two or three times on the ladder, given I have been playing a lot of UU recently. But anyway, I get off the Toxic, which is super nice. Um, I don't think he has anything to touch me, but I'm just going to go into my chestnut either way, because if I can... Because if I can get up a few spikes, that really, really helps me stop a B drill from pivoting in and out and in and out, which is very nice. Even though I do have one hard stop to it in a uh, Dewblade, so um, Dewblade will actually be super important in this battle, um, as he just ends up going for another bulk up, which is fine by me. Um, I do have the spiky shield, um, so I can probably go for that right here on the predicted uh, drain punch if I really want to, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, hopefully he goes for the Drain Punch right here. He just goes for his own Spiky Shield. Look at that, Chestnut Dittos. Um, yeah, I'm just getting up another Spike right here. Or just uh, my first Spike as he does go for the Wood Hammer, which will hurt him with Recoil and all that great stuff. Um, so he dies to Poison next turn, so I lose absolutely nothing by going for Spiky Shield. Um, because we've seen... Oh, no, he's only Wood Hammer. That's neat. Okay, so I'm getting a Spike up. My bad. Um, I'm getting all confused. Um, the only potentially bad thing about this is that a uh, crocodile may have an easier time. Like, had he attacked me right there, but he didn't, so that ends up working out. But I honestly don't think crocodile would have been that much of a problem unless it's like offensive bulk up, um, which I've been actually wanting to try to build around a uh, bulk up crook. Um, I have a big, like, a long list of like 35 mons that I want to build around, but just can't ever come to a conclusion on any of them. Anyway, I'm gonna go for the Drain Punch right here. Is he tricks and he's Zorark, um, but this is a dead Zorark, so um, there you go, people. Uh, end up getting locked into my fighting move, which, you know, n isn't necessarily amazing, but what are you gonna do about it? He goes into Beedrill right here, which is fine, because um, I can just go straight into my Dewblade right here. I can tank any hit this thing wants to go for, bar a knockoff, but I don't think he's gonna go for that right now. He'll probably go for the Poison Jab, which he does very nice for me, as I can just go ahead and Gyro, because um, even if he is knockoff, he's gonna take a good amount of damage right here. He's Drill Run, um, but that's looking like a dead Beedrill, so did I just 6-0 this man? Ah, easy. Given I am using, like, pretty high viability mods, but, you know, um, when you start off with three, you, you, you know, you, <laughs> you just take whatever is available. So, anyway, uh, I'm assuming we're gonna win this unless he's, like, sub-coil my Lodic and I just choke, um, but he just ends up going into this thing, which really isn't a problem because... I'm assuming he's going to go for the knockoff, so watch this play right here. If he does actually knock off, I'm going to be so happy. 
Um, he goes, of course he's crunch. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna go for the drain punch. The plan was for him to knock off my choice scarf, um, but he is crunching. Uh, meh, GG. Yeah, but I don't know what you're saying meh about, but uh, th this was pretty clearly, or like you pretty clearly got dismantled. Um, anyway, so Chestnut is gonna pick up his second kill. Yeah, second kill. That's pretty neat. Um, technically third because he was on the field when Chestnut died, so that's pretty neat. Goes in his own Milotic right here, but it is not an issue at all. Yeah, I did end up making this thing bulky just for the purposes of um, taking on fire types a little bit better, and uh, not necessarily fire types, but just bulky stuff because, you know, that's kind of annoying. And it also gives me a defogger, which is super nice. Um, so we'll see what he decides to go for right here. He just ends up going for his Scald, which is fine. Even if he had burned me, it was not an issue. And I'm going to do something kind of dirty right here. I'm just going to click Rest because even if he burns me, it's looking like a snack wrap. Um, so anyway, Mons that I'm going to take. Um, huh. Huh, indeed. Part of me wants to take another Crocodile because it's just so good. Um, but we're going to hit another Crocodile. I know that for sure. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and take Nitto King, um, because I feel like Nitto King really does, uh, like, like, if I do need a wall breaker, then, like, I can always have that in the back. Look at how much damage that Gyro Ball is doing, but he just ends up forfeiting, helping it, helping out the time, so I'm going to go ahead and hit, add Nitto King right here. Um, so, th these are our backups, the, these are the Pokemon that we've picked up so far that we just haven't gotten a chance to use and we'll probably add in later uh, we have Crobat, Lucario, and Nidoking as you guys can see so uh, we are only seven minutes in we're gonna go ahead and grab another one and uh, I was gonna pause it but guess not so it looks like I will be taking a drink of my Dr. Pepper on camera if you guys don't mind actually I'm gonna mute my mic to do this so it's not annoying um, where, where's my mute mic mute All right, I'm back. <laughs> Looking at this guy's team, it's kind of scary, actually. I feel like this is something I would lose to. Um, I feel like he's going to lead Darm no matter what, so I'm just going to go ahead and lead with your boy, um, D-Train the Salamence, because if I can detail something and scout his initial switch in, that's cool. Um, the realization that I have nothing for Togetic is kind of scary. Um, but he ends up leading with this, which, you know, I suppose, like, there's worse things for him to lead with. Um, this thing's kind of a problem. This has great stab coverage, um, but I'm just going to click detail right here. If he tricks me, then he tricks me. But he just goes into Togetic, which, you know, I'm fine with him going into that because, uh, what does he have? Oh, never mind. I was going to say, what does he have for Snorlax, but he kind of has that, which is, so once I get rid of that, I think Snorlax just picks up the tab. Um, I'm just going to go into Dewblade right here, though, because Dewblade pretty much uh, chews any hit this thing wants to go for. He reveals the Razzle Dazzle, which does a cool 9%, so I can just go ahead and fire off a Toxic, as long as he doesn't go into a t Toxicroak, which I really don't think he's Shadow Ball. Sick. Um, so getting off the Toxic on that thing is kind of nice. Um, I kind of want a Toxic again. But I'm just going to go ahead and Gyro, because in case he goes into... Uh, toxic croak right here then I can get off some more damage which is always nice because as I said weakening toxic croak is one of my win conditions right here um, also looking like crook can have a little bit of fun if I uh, weaken togetic he ends up staying in getting the spit after op which is kind of bad because um, I do need this thing actually I really need this thing um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Suicune right here See, see, this is an issue, because as soon as I go out in a Suicune, that's, like, super red flagged him for him to go right at in a Toxic Croak. But I'm just, um, let's see, Shadow Ball was doing 23, multiply that by 1.5 is, like, oh boy, math. <laughs> it's, like, 36-ish percent, so I can get a rest off if I really want to. Um, because what do I rest versus later? I rest versus this. I rest versus that. So, okay, I can live with this. I'm gonna go into Suicune right here because I can chew any hit that he wants to do, uh, he wants to go for, all that stuff. So he goes for the Shadow Ball, gets another Spideff drop, uh, which is pretty lame, but I'm just going to go back into Elmos. Um, 
because, you know, if I can get a rest off, that's beautiful. Ah, he goes for the air cutter. Classic. Um, anyway, I'm going to go for the rest right here because if, if he really wants to sack this thing, then, like, so be it. You're getting rid of one of the things stop him, stopping me from clicking EQ. So I get off the rest as he does go down to Toxic. So funny how that works out. Um, you know, kind of conflicted on how that went. I would have liked to have Dublated 100% and Awake, or at least like 60% and Awake. Um, but you know, I guess you got to kind of live with it. We'll see what he goes out into right here. Um, I'm thinking he's probably going to go out into Darm. I feel like it would be a mistake for him to go out into Shark, and he does go out into Darm, so good play on his part. I'm just going to go into Mence, because Mence can chew this hit. Um, I get off the Intimidate, he goes for the EQ, it's far too easy. Um, so I'm just going to click Detail here, because I'm assuming he's choiced, as he's not. Rip. <laughs> um, I get off 28% with the Detail, though, which, you know, is respectable. And uh, kind of want to just fodder this to click EQ right here. Um... Actually, this kind of helps for his Toxic Croak, if he's not Ice Punch. Yeah, it does. Um, so it looks like I'm saving that. Um, Suicune is not doing a whole lot, but I guess it could be useful to take hits from one of those late game. Um, huh. Huh, indeed. Um, Alright, so l let me just break this down real quick. So, Dewblade beats that 1v1, which is great. Um... This beats that and that, that potentially, and uh, Darm for sure, 1v1. Um, Chestnut beats this 1v1, and kind of this 1v1, it depends on if he tricks or not. Um, I'm just trying to decide what's most expendable. Um, Snorlax can just straight up win the game. Huh. Alright, I feel like I'm just going to go to Snorlax, because I feel like I can win, um other ways. Okay, he just goes for the Dragon Pulse. It's easy. Um, so I can just go for the Body Slam right here and uh, get some damage off as he just ended up going out the Tox Stroke. If I get a Para here, that helps so much. Don't end up getting a Para, but it's okay because I can just go straight out into Dewblade. I am immune to both of his stabs. Um, so he has to be running Knock Off to beat me. And uh, Okay, he just goes for the Drain Punch, but chewed. Straight chewed. I can just Sleep Talk right here. Uh, not actually an issue. If he has the knockoff, that's a little bit troubling. Um, but if he has the knockoff, then he loses to Mence. Um, so if I get a Toxic off here, that'd be wonderful. Beautiful. Look at that. Um, so I'm just going to go straight out into D-Train right here. Because I can chew a Fire Blast. Or not a Fire Blast, a Flare Blitz. And then uh, just roost it off the following turn. As uh, he just does end up going for the Stone Knight. So good play on his part. Um, but once I roost, he's not going to be able to uh, beat me 1v1. Um, I wonder what item he is. He's not Life Orb, because Earthquake and Stone Edge don't have secondary effects that are affected by Sheer Force. Um, is he like Focus Sash or something? <laughs> um, he just ends up going into Shark right here, which is fine, because I have a 100% safe stop in Chestnut. Um, it chews what- I, I'm, I'm saying choose a lot, I'll try to stop saying that, but um, he just ends up going for the Protect right here, which is fine. I'm just gonna go straight away for, uh, my first layer of spikes, um, because it really, okay, he just goes, ow, stop, <laughs> um, okay, I'm clicking drain punch right here, because I can't have him be critting and freezing me all over the place, um, so that does not kill me, which is nice, of course, <sighs> uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna spiky shield right here, hopefully he misses, or, like, misses on the following turn, um, He's not lefties. I'm assuming he's Sash or something. Um, I I'm going to go into Suicune right here, because Suicune can beat this thing 1v1. This thing's just annoying, especially when it like crits you and then flinches you. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's okay. It's okay. I, I should have just gone, gone for the Drain Punch, but to be fair, I didn't expect him to stay in. He just ends up going for the Ice Fang again. Even if he freezes me, um, I can break break free because I have the most broken move in the game Scald, he just uh, stays in goes for the crunch as I go for the Scald do I burn? Hit me up with that burn come on friend um kind of want to go to Mence to get the Intimidate off okay, I, I have a grand plan right here, we're going to see how well it works um, because I'm going to get the Intimidate off um he's going to go for the Ice Fang, so I'm going to pivot back to Suicune, I'm just trying to get um, Chestnut some HP back um, 
he goes for the crunch right here that does zero and now he's gonna go for the crunch again right oh, this this is an issue no mind I'm just gonna click scald um I'm kind of wary of clicking ah oh, nice I uh, kind of wary of clicking scald because of toxic Cause do I get the crit burn I don't get the crit burn these lucky players man um yeah, but basically, I don't see why he's not just going out into Toxic Rook right here. Toxic Rook is a 100% stop to Suicune. But, you know. If he doesn't want to do it, then hey, I'm not stopping him. Um, I'm assuming he'll go out into either Rotomo or Toxic Rook right here. So he goes out into Ampharos, which, you know, is also a very good play. Um, I could go into Crocodile if I really wanted to. Because um, I don't really see much use for this. So I'm just going to click Scald. We'll see if I get a burn right here. You know, if I get a burn, that's wonderful. If not, it's not the end of the world. Um, because he's not Scarf Darm, all I got to do is get rid of Rotomo and then I just spam EQ. Um, I get the burn right there, which is kind of nice as he just goes for the T Bolt. Um, so I'm assuming Crook can KO from here with the EQ. Um, you know, we're, we're going to go ahead and chance it. Um, so. Sork can actually just straight up win the game at this point because if he doesn't go to row to mo then he's sacking something else um, as he does make the good play goes into row to mo looks like I'm just sacking chestnut right here um sorry chestnut sorry brain loom lover but um it just ain't gonna work out this time I actually lived chewed <laughs> um I'm gonna go for the I'm just gonna go for another spike we'll see if he uh switches out or misses his leaves oh he's not even choice ah i'm bulletproof i got him um <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and click a uh, spiky shield right here on probably his volt switch because i may actually be able to live a volt switch no i won't live a volt switch um what am i talking about i can get another uh, spike up though if he tries to over predict or something over predict i dare you go for another leaf storm predict the crook um or just straight up switch either one of those would work but he can't knock me out with the T-Bolt. So your boy got another layer of spikes up. And I can just click Drain Punch right here. So, like, the 22% uh, Chestnut ends up getting up two more layers of spikes. And it is coming back from the grave. I don't see why he's doing this. Because, like, he's basically weakening the last thing that stops Crook. So, but, you know, I'm not complaining. He ends up going out into Toxic Crook, which... In my opinion, he should have done a long time ago, but I can just go into Dewblade right here. It's not an issue at all. Um, I think Gyro will kill from this range, especially because he can't touch me with either one of his other stabs. And uh, Darm is on the clock because um, it's at 54%. It's going to take 25 more switching in plus 6% uh, from Toxic. So I just get to fire off another Sleep Talk right here. We'll see what uh, he decides to do. But anyway, looking at mons I want to take if I win, um, I don't actually have any Megas yet, so Mega Ampharos wouldn't be bad. Um, the only issue with Mega Ampharos Amphor is that it has an opportunity cost of picking up. Um, he just ends up going into this, yeah. Oh, Citrus Berry, the legendary low ladder. Um, <laughs> anyhow, if I do pick up Ampharos, the opportunity cost is, is that I can't really you is that I can't use any megas if I do pick it up and I have it active so that's always kind of something to be considered um, however I'm not really sure how much I want that to affect my decision making and I think Sork just cleans up right here um, I'm not doing Togetic for sure not doing shark for sure um, Rotom C wouldn't be bad. I already have a grass type and it would but it gives me a nice water resist which I have a lot of in my starters but in like my backups I have zero water resists. Um, it's neutral to flying but it, it is another fire weakness so I'm not sure how much I do want to pull the trigger on that one. Darm wouldn't be horrible because I actually don't have a fire type yet um, but Darm is pretty subpar and, and I know we're going to hit Entei somewhere along the line. Um, so I feel like it's down to Toxicroak and Rotom C, um, and since I'm not, like, I'm not a very good Toxicroak player at all, and, uh, it would make me even more psychic weak than I already am, I'm gonna go ahead and add Rotom, Mo, Rotom C, whatever, it ends up working out, <laughs> um, he just ends up going into Rotom right here, but this is not living a plus one knockoff, unless he's, like, itemless, but, 
Nah, he's weakness policy. <laughs> so th this guy had a pretty weird team. Like, he had some effective sets. He did better than the last guy, but, you know, um, just not enough not enough stopping power for El Sorkinist. So, um, end up picking up another W there. We're 7-0. I'm actually kind of shocked. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and grab another one. I'm going to pause it until we get one, and I will be right back. All right, we're back, um, and this will probably be the last battle we do today. He has a super annoying core. Um, this is actually looking like a straight C team. But <laughs> um, Crook looks like it can put in a little bit of work, though, if I do get rid of this, um, because like if I get rid of this and weaken that, then I can just come in and start spamming EQ, which is super nice. Um, also, he doesn't... Oh, he has a form of hazard removal, but he can't beat my spinner, or my spin blocker. So I'm going to go ahead and lead Chestnut, um, in the hopes that he does lead something like my Lodic. Leads Agron. Okay, like, I can work with this. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, get some spikes up right here. Because, uh, rocks don't really trouble my team that much outside of Mence. And, uh, Mence is really only going to be my pivot for, uh... Mence doesn't really pivot versus a whole lot this game. I may swap out Mence at the end of this battle for Crobat. Because um, I just feel like Crobat works a lot better with my team. Gives me a solid fighting check. As uh, he does end up getting his rocks up right here. I'm just going to go uh, straight away from my seeds. Um, because if he does try to pull a switch out into Hitm on top, Then I do have I have a counter. Um, so we'll, we'll see what he decides to do right here. I'm actually going to probably make that change right now. Um... Just because Crobat feels like it's a lot more, feels like it's a lot better with this team. Um, actually, you know, we'll, we'll wait for it as we see the fire punch, which that's kind of scary. He doesn't burn me, which is nice. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and spiky shield right here because um, I do want to kind of keep this thing healthy considering it does annoy his Milotic um, a fair amount. Also, if I do get spikes up, that's going to help me so much because that can... Uh, like pretty much stop my Lodic. Um, so right here I'm just gonna click spiky shield again. I have no reason not to. Getting off a little residual is always nice, especially on bulky stuff like Hitmon Top. And then I can go straight away into Dewblade and uh, fire off a Toxic probably as he ends up going for a fake out. So there we go. That's what you get for doing that. I'm just gonna go straight into Dewblade because uh, you know Dewblade can pretty much handle this thing. Um, even if he's EQ, uh, I have rest. So ends up going for the rapid spin right there. You get spin blocked, son. Uh, <laughs> so I can just fire off a toxic right here. It's not really that much of an issue. Um, if he does try to go out into something like Mens, that's even better for me. Or Chandelure, because getting residual on that is nice. And I feel like this team really revolves around getting a lot of residual on stuff. So, um, especially when you have two very fat mons like Suicune and Snorlax. And I don't miss. I got that no guard. Um... But anyway, Storm Likes is a 100% safe switch into this. Um, even if he's sub CM, he's on a timer now, and that's the that's the good thing about getting a toxic off on that is that even that, though I don't have anything to touch him, he can't touch me with anything. Um, right here, I kind of want to predict the switch, um, but then again, like you never predict the ladder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, rest right here um, because it does get me back up to full. I and I can switch in on a lot of things which is super nice that sentence was super vague um i'm gonna go into suicune right here because i know he can't really touch me uh even if he goes for the heavy slam then i'm gonna chew that and if he lets me stay in and get a uh, burn off on his aggro and that's very very nice for me um because you know uh it, then it can't really beat chestnut 1v1 like it can right now because it has fire punch um so basically, the next opportunity I can spike, I will. Uh, he goes for the EQ, which does zero. That did absolutely nothing. I can just go for a Scald. Even if he goes into Blissey, uh, that's all the more reason for me to just go straight out into Chestnut. Because um, while Chestnut is nice for like beating aggro on 1v1, 1v1, it's not the end of the world if it does get toxic um, So, you know, we'll see. And actually, this team does kind of match up well versus Chandelure. A lot of teams that I build don't, so it's funny how that kind of naturally just fell into place. Because um, I can revenge kill it with Crook. Um, Snorlax takes any hit. Um, this is immune to Shadow Ball. That chews any hit bar Energy Ball. That chews anything bar Shadow Ball. Uh, so he goes and hit on top right here. Risks the burn, which I don't really think is a great play. Um, because if I had burned that, then 
you know, that's really bad for him. But I'm just going to go straight out into Dewblade. It is my best play. Um, I'll only be taking like 6% from rocks. So even if he goes for the EQ, I can just rest that off. And it is not an issue at all. As he makes a good double in a Chandelure. So, you know, good play. Um, but he did lose, like, what, 18 or 16% of his health right there? Something like that. So, you know, I'll take it. Um, I'm just going to double straight back out in a Snorlax because my team has more recovery than his team does. So any way that I can uh, force him to switch around a lot is great. Um, once I get rid of his Hitmontop, I'll probably defog as he makes a good double in Immense. This guy's making all sorts of plays. Um, what do I have for Immense? Oh, I have Sweet Kid. Okay. Um, oh, this is kind of an issue. Kind of an issue. Um... I'm just going to go into Dewblade because I'm fairly confident I chew a plus one EQ. Um, he does DD up, so I'm going to Gyro. Um, if I lose to Mence right here, that's unfortunate, but it gives me another reason just to drop my Mence. Sorry, D-Train. <laughs> um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what he decides to do right here. I'm not even sure Gyro kills. Um, but hopefully it puts it in range of Suicune Scald or Solax Body Slam, assuming I do pull Body Slam. Um, losing my spin blocker right here will suck, uh, as I actually chew that, yum. Um, so I gyro, I don't end up knocking him out, that's unfortunate. Um, I'm gonna pivot to my own mens, because on the off chance I do get a chance to rest versus maybe, maybe Blissey, then I'll take that because, you know, keeping this Dewblade around is super helpful, and, uh... I force him to outrage right here. Um, so he goes for the Dragon Claw. Good play. Um, nothing I can do about that. So it uh, looks like Dewblade will be dead upon switch in. But I can just go straight out into Suicune because I'm fairly confident it can chew a plus one Dragon Claw. But things are kind of bursting at the seams right here. Um, which is a little unfortunate. Hopefully I can chew this and rest versus whatever he sends out. Um, I still do have Chestnut and Suicune, which are two of the things I really handle this team. Um, and, of course, like, losing Dewblade sucks, don't get me wrong, like, it's horrible, but, I mean, I can work with that more than losing something like Suicune or losing Chestnut, because I do really need Chestnut this battle. Um, so I believe Scald plus, uh, Scald plus Life Orb will knock him out, if not, I'm getting the burn, it's easy. Um, as he decides to switch out, which I guess is a pretty good play, I'm just gonna go out into Chestnut, though. Um, even if he goes out into uh, Hitmontop, I can just, like, even if he doubles to Hitmontop, I can just lead seed and uh, do all that stuff. So, um, honestly, I feel like his best play right here is to double because the chestnut is pretty obvious and uh, Shandy is something that it doesn't like at all. So, uh, you know, that, that is, of course, I think the play from the make, but I'm going to go ahead and pause it, and uh, we'll... Never mind, I ain't going to pause it. Um, does he switch? No, nah, he just throws a wish in the air. Um, I can't allow him to go into Ments for free. Um, so I'm just going to fire off a Leech Seed right here, because I get some HP back if he does go into Ments. And uh, at that point, I can, like, Spiky Shield and uh, Spikes, I think. I think that is my best play. Um... Because it allows me to chew pretty much anything that he wants to go for. But this thing is a problem, man. Um, but if I do get this out of the way, that's going to be super helpful. He does go into man's crap. Um, I do hit my leaf seed, which is nice. But he is back at full. Um, so what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go straight out into my Suicune. Because if I do get the burn on this thing, that is very, very nice. Um, and this is kind of the point to where I wish I was taunt not, but I'm not. And haha. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll see what he decides to do right here. Um, I'm assuming he's just going to DD because this is kind of setup fodder, but he makes a good double in a Shandy, um, which, you know, like, it's a good play, but I'm not sure, like, how much it helps him end game because, like, basically he just took a lot more damage. Although he is getting residual on Suicune, which I guess he does need. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, sack Dewblade right here. I'm going to sack it now as opposed to sacking it versus Hitmontop trying to spin. Because um, I get to see what he locks himself into and switch into the appropriate Mon to handle it. Um, feel like I'm just going to go into Crook right here. Because getting the plus one is very, very nice. I can't actually threaten his team after that. Um, 
it'll force him into hit on top which you know isn't amazing for me but it's like there are worse things to force him into so getting the knockoff off is very very nice um and it will allow me to threaten Mentz to a reasonable degree from that point forward. So it's all part of the process. So bye-bye Chandelure. Get rid of your scarf. So now that that thing is gone, uh, Snorlax has a little bit of an easier time, but it still has to break through Aggron, which is just super annoying. I actually haven't seen an Aggron on the ladder in ages, outside of like the UU tour that I played last night. But um, he was in him on top right here. I don't think stock knockoff will kill. Uh, so I'm just going into Chestnut. Actually, I'm going to go into Suicune right here, right? Ah, no, I got to go into uh, Chestnut. Because uh, I can continue to get spikes up and beat him 1v1 by, like, drain punching and spiking and spiky shielding. So I'll probably go into that. Um, if he doubles to Mence right here, that's really threatening because I have zero for Mence. Um, I really need to pick up something for that. Um, so I'll probably end up picking up Akron as... <laughs> As kind of a, as much as I really don't like Agron, I'll probably pick it up if I uh, if I do somehow manage to win this battle. Because looking at my team right here, like even the backups, I don't have anything for it, unless I want to go like Banded CC, not Banded CC, Banded E Speed. Um, so if I can pick that up, that will be beautiful. Um, he does go into immense. So give me them seeds. <laughs> don't hurt me. Um, I'm gonna go straight away for... I feel like spiking is my best play. I kind of feel like it is. Like, I have to get Suicune in for free. And Crook wins me the game. I guess I could go out into Snorlax and hope that he just attacks right now. Because I think two D-Claws will actually kill Suicune. Because it is Life Orb. But, you know, we'll see. We shall see. Um, Mince is actually a really annoying Mon. But, you know, what you gonna do about it? I guess mons that I'm looking to pick up later, that'd be kind of a good thing to talk about right here. He just ends up going with the DD help. Um, so if I chew a hit and pair him with body slam, I'm in a beautiful position right here. Um, anyway, mons that I'm looking to pick up, Obama Snow would be very nice. I find myself using that thing a lot because it does beat Mence 1v1. Oh my god, help me. Um, body slam, body slam, body slam, para. Yes! We is really out here. Let's go. <laughs> um, right here, I have to go for another sleep talk. If I'm really feeling real, I can double. But I feel like sleep talking is my best play. Because um, then I can just spam body slam and not... Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh, thank God. Oh, that helped us so much. I got super excited about that. <laughs> Hopefully not rip headphone users, because, you know. Um, anyway, so looking at the remainder of his team, I feel like I'm in a really, really good position right here. Um, because if I can get Crook in, I can start clicking EQ. He does go into on top right here, which does not trouble me in the slightest, because uh, I can just go into Chestnut, start getting spikes up, start pressuring this on top on the switch, which I really do want, as he ends up going for the fake out right here. Yo, the crit made up for the para. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go for the lead seed right here. I feel like his best play is to go into Aggron, just being completely honest, um, because staying in with this is kind of counterproductive. He goes into Blissey, which... Um, I miss, but that's okay. Um, I can just go for the, uh, I, I could go for the Drain Punch and get 7 million HP back, but I I'm just going to go for a Spike, because it does threaten him relatively well, and, uh, it's kind of hard, because neither of my win conditions can really muscle past the combination of Aggron and Blissey. Also, this is going to be a super long episode, so if you've stuck with me this far, thank you very much. Um, your support is appreciated. He ends up going for a Toxic right here, which is a little bit troubling, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I'm just going to go for another Spike right here, because if I can get him on top of Weekend, that's very helpful. Um, I'm going to go for... I'm actually going to double right here, because I feel like going into Crook is my best play reason I say that is because I can click superpower versus Blissey. Either A, pick up a KO, or B, force top. I kind of want to force top. Um, or I could just EQ, but that's also kind of risky. I feel like he's just going to throw a wish in the air, though. Um, we'll see. It sucks that I lost Dewblade. Um, 
T ends up going for a wish, so that's good for me. Um, I'm clicking EQ. If I get toxic, I have to switch out immediately. Um, but I just can't let him on top get in for free. I cannot let it get in for free. Please kill. Please kill. Do it. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Oh, sigh. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to go into probably my Suicune right here. Um, I guess I can just start CMing. And speed this next part up like hyper speed because it's gonna be this is gonna be a long battle this is like fat balance versus fat balance um, so I'm assuming he'll just spin right here um, anyway I'm gonna pause it and think about what to do for a second I'll be right back All right, I think what I've decided to do is um, I'm gonna try to set up with this um, cause he doesn't have a whole lot that can touch this and I can PP stall Blissey if that's what it comes down to. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and, uh, continue recording, but speed up the last part of this video and then put my outro at the end. Um, cause this, this is going to be, this is going to be a long battle. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'll probably, I'm not sure if I should cut this or speed it up. I'm going to speed it up though. Um, because, you know, if you guys were like, oh, I didn't really want to watch it being sped up, then that's cool. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, speed this up. And I'll be back. <laughs> All right, we're back. <laughs> that took forever. Um, horrible experience. <laughs> um, I'm a, I, you know, I want 4-0 though. I'll take it. Um, looking at his team, I'm thinking, your boy is thinking that we're going to take um, either Shandy or uh, Agron. Because I, I already have men, so I'm not taking my Lodic or Blissey. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take Mega Agron. Because a uh, really cool Mon. Uh, Agron Mega, there we go. A uh, really cool Mon, and it uh, gives us a uh, men's check. But anyway, um, that's going to wrap up today's super long episode. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like, as it really does help show support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Also, make sure to answer today's comment question of the video, which is, what is the longest battle you have ever been in? Um, I had one in early XYUU that went to, like, 500 and something turns, because it was, like, triple regenerator core versus double regenerator core. But anyway, with that, I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content. And with that... I'll catch you guys on the flip-flop.